text and algebra one half lesson 98 uh, we're going to switch gears Kayla we're going to talk about geometry specifically we're going to talk about angles change it up from all of this algebra we've been doing um just a little bit of concept and terminology review let's say we have a triangle that looks like this and it has uppercase a b and c at the corners that's normally the way we name our angles then we also so can write it as angle, we say angle A, angle B, angle C, right? So these are ways we can note angles. Um, we can make big, crazy, complicated pictures. Normally an angle is two rays coming out from a center point, right? But in this case we have three rays coming out from the same center point, and that allows us to a lot of different ways of talking about the angles. Now, let me just remind you that this ABC has nothing really to do with this. All right, that's not the same. Okay, so we can come up with a lot of different angles here. We can talk about angle CAY. C A Y, so that would be this. We can talk about angle C A X. C A X. That would be the same angle, wouldn't it? These two are the same. Um, what about angle B A X? B A X, and then angle B A Y, also the same. What about angle Y A B? YAB and angle YAC. YAC, also the same. And then what about XAB? XAB and XAC. XAC, these are also the same. So, what you can see is that there are lots of ways to designate the same angle and they all make sense and they're all perfectly fine. Okay. And there's more, but I don't want to just go on with this forever. I think it's fine. All right. Here is a super important ideal. Okay, complementary angles and supplementary angles are a very similar idea with just one twist. The idea with complementary angles is that if you put them together, there are two angles that when put together add to 90 degrees. Okay, they make the full quadrant. Supplementary angles are the same kind of idea except they add to 180. Right? Um, and these are super useful for algebra problems because we can use that information to calculate different things. Now, the trick is everybody remembers, everybody forgets which one is the 90 degrees and which one is the 180 degrees. Here's how I remember it alphabetically, C comes before S, and numerically, 90 comes before 180. So to me, that's the little trick. Okay? So here's the way we can use these in a problem. And that's why, that's one reason why John um, mixes his algebra and geometry together. He doesn't separate them into different classes the way so many people do. Because the best geometry problems take a geometric concept and then play with it using algebra. And so that is what he likes to do. I think that makes fun. And why would we then worry about separating them into different classes when what we're really doing is talking about both ideas at the same time? So that's the thinking there. That's why John integrates his geometry and his algebra. Okay. Here's a picture. I was talking as I was writing it, but I want you to take a minute to copy that out. Pause me copy it to get it to this point, and then I'll go on with my conversation. 
Okay, so we want to find the measure in this one. This is A. We want to find the measure of angle A, B, C. All right, A, B, C. So we want to find this part here, right? I'm going to put it with a double line. That's what we're looking for. Um, so how do we figure that out? Okay, this much is 90. That's a straight line. So this much must, must also be 9 degrees. Oh, and the fancy way of saying that is that angle A, B, C and this angle are complementary, right? They add 90 degrees. So A, B, C, this angle, has to be equal to 90 minus the 30, which is 60 degrees, right? Here's 180. This much is 90, so we know this much is 90. And then that much is 30, so our angle ABC must be 60 degrees. Yay! And then here's the picture for the other one. You don't have to draw the pictures for the homework, uh, unless you want to. But for the most part, uh, you can just look at the pictures in the book and go from there. It's not necessary to copy them out at this point. Okay, here we're finding angle, this is part B, we want to find angle D, E, F. Oh, and there's one more piece of information. Okay, so this one's even smaller than that one. Straight line that's 180 degrees, and our angle is supplementary. So if we subtract 45, we get 135 degrees, and that is the measure of that bad boy. Here, I'll do this again so you know which one we're looking for, and this was correct, also. Okay, so that is the way we use the concepts of complementary and supplementary angles in algebra problems to solve. Remember that complementary are the 90 degrees, supplementary are the 180. That's the hardest part of all of this. All right? Great. All right, 98 point C is about using a protractor. And a protractor is one of those plastic thingies here. I'll put it like this. Um, that we can use to measure angles. Now, John doesn't really even require you to go ask your mom, Mom, do we have a program? I'll the picture of them for you. And here's what's cool about protractors. Let me put my lid on my marker so I can write on my book. Let's say that this angle was drawn on your paper and you wanted to measure this angle using a protractor. There's a little hole right here. You can see it if you look carefully. Over, there's point O, and there's a little black circle, a little black dot, but then there's a circle around it. That represents the circle on the protractor. You would line the point O up in that circle, and then this orienting line here, which is on the protractor, you would line up with your angle A. So once you get the circle settled and the line straightened, then you can read, see how the grid goes both ways? We want this to be zero, and then we read up and we go, oh, this is a 45 degree angle. The way this works is that if the angle is oriented over here and it spreads this way, let's say we wanted to read the supplement of this angle, we go, oh, this starts as zero and then it goes all the way over, and we can see, oh, that would be 135 degrees. So we can use, we can measure angles from either side of the protractor. We just have to be careful to choose the right. Uh, measuring system, the right grid, if you will, uh, the right scale for what we're trying to measure. All right, so here we're going from 0 to 45. Over here we'd be going from 0 to 135. Yay, practice problem. Um, remember, uh, obtuse means greater than 90 degrees, acute means less than 90 degrees, right angle means exactly 90 degrees. So, just to help you, that would be the obtuse, that would be the acute, and that would be the right angle. And then here we have uh, more protractor work, everything's lined up perfectly, you don't have to get a protractor, you just have to figure out, okay, angle AOC, AOC. Okay, so we're measuring those two lines 
and it looks like that would be what, 15 degrees. All right, and then IOF, for example, well, we wanted to use that on the other grid. That would be 90 degrees, well, it's 90 on both of them, so that doesn't help, but let's say it's IOH, that would be 48 degrees. Okay, there's your lesson. Congratulations, go to your homework. Good job, Kayla.